I encourage failure, right? Like I encourage it. It's not about um, not losing. It's not about not feeling scared and not um, trying so hard that you you fall. You know, running so fast that you trip. Like it's about that. But I do feel like arming yourself with controllable wins is our story. An entrepreneur straight out of New York City, Michael Chernow was cracking. All right, it's four o'clock. I've got a train at five oh eight. I got Johnny Yarms in the left seat here in the in the driver's seat. I'm sitting passenger, and we're about to give it to you. Creatures of habit, what's really going down? This episode. This is a good one. Ladies and gents, all the above, little ones, big ones, young and old. Today, we've got some good news for you. So, my partner in crime, the chief operating officer at Creatures El Habito, is here to uh, walk with us on this journey to share some great news. So, Johnny, why don't you kick it off and just let us know what, what, uh, what, what's going on? What happened in the last uh, four weeks? Yeah, the last four weeks has been been a lot, been a lot. Um, yeah, exciting news, um, and all really kudos to you on this, um, which is something that I've been thinking about. But um, but yeah, we're pretty much there in closing the convertible note. So, a lot of your time and effort, especially in in getting that done, and so um, that's super exciting for what it opens up for the business. It's just even been cool in like the couple of weeks since then for us to be able to actually like ideate on things that will really significantly push the business forward without having to kind of play scared in a sense. Um, and we can get on the attack a little bit. So huge shift for us, going to be hugely impactful for the business um, and very exciting, very exciting. So we pretty much closed the round. I mean, there's a, there's a few bucks out there that are still – not claim that I think within the next two weeks will be will be covered. Yep. The other piece, so that is massive. I, I just that is, and I and 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 one thing that I want to remind you of, and I'm grateful that you sort of congratulate me for you know being at the helm of that mission of raising the money. It's not possible without you. It's just simply it would not happen without you. It's just that simple. So I'm not saying I can't take a compliment. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're fucking welcome. Um, <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, is that you and I are a dynamic duo in this in this party together. And I call it a party because at the end of the day, I really do wake up excited every, every single day, no matter how hard it is. I wake up excited every single day to get after it. I just do. And even in the times that I'm like, oh, my gosh, man, is this going to work? I'm I I wake up with 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 vigor to go. Um, so we also have a really cool partnership in development that's happening right now with Lance Armstrong and his team over at We Do Production Network, where we're bringing this podcast into the We Do Production umbrella. So we'll be spending a fair amount of time with Lance. It's a really cool guy to connect with and sort of. Um, really build a friendship with you know he he loves the brand he loves what we're doing and he believes in us in a real way and so that is ultimately awesome but there's been there's been a lot of positivity a lot of positivity so we we you know and and lance is a is a is a a big catalyst to us actually closing the convertible note he's made some intros and we've got some great new folks that f felt the same way he did when he invested so you know right now well, let's let's get into the grain, right? We 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 just hired a new full time employee. Yep. Uh, who is his his name is Scott Hickenlooper, amazing dude. I worked with him a few years ago on content for creatures, and he is uh, has taken the role of director of content and social media. His real focus is going to be on creating, directing, curating uh, the content for us in our organic social media, which ultimately we hope to impact and influence our paid media. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think we've we haven't really scratched the surface, I think, of what the potential exists in organic social. Um, and I think Scott is really going to going to elevate that. I mean, we were just out in Utah where 
Um, he was shooting content, you know, the entire 48 hours or whatever it was that we were there. And even like in the moment, you can kind of feel how impactful it is to just be able to both do things on the spot and then also ideate on what we can do in the future and know like this isn't just an idea that's going to end up in an email somewhere or just lost into the abyss. Like we're going to actually be able to execute on it in a meaningful way in the coming months. And in, in large part, that won't fall on the two people in the in this room. <laughs> and that's it's it's relieving in a sense, because some of the stress of the past like six months has been there's a lot of times that like we're holding back the business just because like you can't create more time. Right. So we did what we needed to do in terms of like, how do we execute as best as possible with what we have? And now it's exciting to think about there's going to be other people involved that are going to help move things forward. Um, and, you know, we can kind of help just foster that happening. I am a huge believer and always have been in this idea that business is storytelling. Great business is storytelling. And and I put a heavy highlight on brand over product. I think brand, you know, the product has to be good, right? Like it has to be, it has to be good. It doesn't have to be the best thing ever. It has to be good. But if the brand is not great, if the story is not great, your chances of like exponential growth and also staying power are mitigated immensely, right? The coolest thing about a guy like Scott, and I don't want to, I don't want to like, talk poorly about agency, mm -hmm. but there's a massive difference between having somebody who's deeply passionate about something, working on it eight hours a day or whatever, however many hours he's working on it a day, constantly creating, constantly innovating, constantly testing, constantly working on something, than an agency where you're gonna get, if you're lucky, 10 hours a month, right? And having someone that comes from an agency background, I think also amplifies that because working i mean like i started my career kind of in a consulting capacity so you understand that feeling of like you never really get to build and see something through to fruition because you're constantly just like in service mode right and and then you're kind of at the whim of the agency model so going from an agency to an in-house brand is probably extremely exciting for someone who's really looking to create and build something. So I'm really excited about it. I think it's going to be very impactful. So what are the other things that we're talking about doing now that we're working from a place of strength and not necessarily from our heels where we were for a few months there? Yeah, so we're trying to figure out how to kind of reactivate email. Uh, we don't do, and I don't think that we'll ever really be the brand that's going to be like jamming email down your throat. But right now, Right now, I actually think we do a decent job of storytelling, but there's just a lot of strategy that's not being deployed that I think we can elevate, whether it's, you know, abandoned cart, abandoned checkout, um, you know, different ways of kind of getting people into uh, the email funnel and retaining customers, et cetera. Like every strategy that exists in email, I think we can probably amplify. Um, but again, I think the storytelling is kind of there right now. The design's probably not there because you and I did a lot of it and we kind of just <laughs> told the story and we we're like, all right, this is good here. Um, so that's something. And then the other thing is really just purchasing power. I mean, that's probably not the only other thing, but what's top of mind for me right now is from an operational standpoint, right? We have, we have a decent amount of inventory on hand that'll hold us over for kind of the turns that we need, but then we're also going to be in a position of strength, um, with cash and hopefully financing. And we've never really pushed a limit on aggressively buying on inventory to be able to grow into margins. And so that's a lot of the conversation right now of like, let's not waste this moment. One of the things that I appreciated about, you know, when quite literally those angels came in and helped us almost close the round was you pausing and being like, let's make sure that we celebrate this. Like, don't just let it pass by. Um, and I think we've done a good job of acknowledging how meaningful it is. And now it's kind of like, you know, let's not waste that moment, right? Let's get to work and see how we can utilize that. And I think operationally, it'll be very impactful for us. And, and we're starting to see some of it. Something that I just want to share that's a little bit, you know, virtuous, I would say, and not so analytical, logistical, or the like, is the mindset that I have had and I think also 
by proxy from being close to me, you've grown way more of is the the sort of no matter what, unstoppable, optimistic mindset. I truly believe that that is <laughs> like the tipping point for most people where they get to a place where it just doesn't seem like it's going to work out. And maybe it does work out, but if your mindset is you, you've already gone down the path of this is it, it's actually over, you, you actually mentally, physically, spiritually change your demeanor on how you attack the problem at hand, and your chances are, are, are less than if you are no matter what get the fuck back up, it's going to work. And I think that that has powered me through a lot of experiences in business. Like I don't like when, I don't believe in impossibility. I just don't, you know? And I was listening, I actually heard um, Dana White say that in an interview recently uh -huh. where he's like, you know, people don't like this about me necessarily, but like I don't, when somebody says impossible, I get pissed off. I think every, there is a way to get what you want to get. There's a way there, no matter how hard it may seem, no matter how many fucking hurdles are in your path. If you have the mindset of no matter what, we are going to figure this out and it's going to get, and it's going to happen and I'm going to do it and it might take days, it might take weeks, it might take months, but it is the persistence of optimism and just pounding the door down because you believe in something so strongly. Yeah. To the first part of what you said, it definitely has been contagious, the optimistic mindset. I mean, I think, and I don't mind speaking candidly on it, like, a, I don't know if it was a couple of weeks ago that we kind of had this conversation. I, I think I was kind of in a place, I almost equate it to like plateauing at the gym, right? It's like you're working so hard and you're consistently putting in the work and like that next level isn't coming, right? And then, and that's so super discouraging, right? And that's kind of like from a business standpoint where I almost felt like we were, and then like, you know, we had a conversation, you were obviously optimistic, and then been a matter of what, like a week? No, dude. Actually, I'm going <laughs> to tell, you exactly, I'm gonna yeah. tell you exactly what happened. It was a Wednesday. Yeah. I was on a ruck. It was raining, and it was nasty. And you said to me, word for word, <laughs> I just don't feel like we're getting any small wins. Yeah. And, I, and I'm feeling frustrated about that. I don't feel like we're getting any small wins. And I think I probably, I don't remember what I said back, but I would imagine it was something along the lines of, it's going to work out, dude. We're going to fucking figure it out. And then on Friday, I got the good news that we were going to close the round. Two days later, mm -hmm. and I sent you a, I think it was a text that basically said, let's read it. I'll tell you exactly what it said. Friday, February 23rd, I write, dude, hit me when you can. And you wrote probably around two. I'm answering questions about electrical requirements for a warehouse. And then I said, I think I just secured us $410,000. <laughs> he finished the call by saying, in regards to what I'm comfortable putting in, I'd like to invest in odd numbers. I do multiples of 18. I'd like to invest well, somewhere around $360,000. And that's when my head exploded on the call <laughs> and was very, very excited about that. And then I just wrote, let's fucking go. And then you wrote, you're the man. And then I said, can I get a witness? Um, and so moments like this, just today is March 6th. This happened two weeks ago. And really, you know, not that we were, not that the whole business has changed because the whole business hasn't changed. The whole business has actually stayed the same on the trajectory that we were hoping for. But the stress of having to raise money um, has no long, is no longer uh is no longer uh, an issue right now. And we're good for a while, a while. And that is, you know, that this isn't the first time that we've said this on this podcast together, right? Like the difference between something happening and something not happening. Mm -hmm. But I'm knocking on wood. We figured it out the whole time. We've always figured it out. And I think that that has a lot to do with how you walk through life in between your ears. Yeah. And it's not, it, it's, it's very hard to talk about versus live, right? Like what you're saying, I was listening to 
I always listen to the all in podcast on a weekly basis. And they were talking about, um, one of the businesses that one of the guys had built and it was like eight years in. Right. And it was like, and they just kind of like hit escape velocity and they just haven't, we're having a conversation about how it's almost like you just need to survive until that happens. Right. And you don't want to like work in survival mode necessarily, but that's kind of like where we were like, okay, just survive, keep your head down, keep going. And then something good is going to come. Um, and so, yeah, it, it def most definitely has. I mean, there's, there was other things going on at the same time too, right? We, we were assessing our paid media efficiencies coming out of January. And so we were trying to figure out, you know, our targeting strategy and we, we scaled a little too hard. It fucked up the, uh, the efficiencies. We had yeah. to pull it back a little bit. Yeah. And so it w it was like an accumulation of discouraging things. They weren't like they weren't detrimental in a way that they kill the business. But that's, I think, where, you know, for me, all of that in the aggregate being like, just give me a small win, you know, give me something like where's the reward for kind of just continuing to see it through. And um, and yeah, I, th I think that that's kind of what ended up happening. I shared something on uh, on social media right after this happened and and you you know by saying small win like i can't get a small win w w the way i'm perceiving this is and and the reason and the and, and the sort of ethos of our brand creatures of habit is this idea that like if we're expecting small wins or big wins to come from everything external we're probably going to miss out all the time or I'm just an overly optimistic guy, which is probably a combination of both. But we can't expect, from my experience, and I can only speak for myself here, we can't expect the world to win for us ever, right? Like the small wins that we put into our day-to-day -day that we have control over, little things, waking up earlier, going to the gym, doing some reflection, you know, eating well, uh, maybe meditating, maybe journaling, maybe reading, maybe fucking cold plunge, maybe sauna, maybe whatever the fuck it is for you. Those little wins consistently are going to build a confident, courageous human being. And the big wins tend to require more people. You know, they require the big wins. Nine out of 10 times are going to require more people. So my philosophy is just keep keep stacking the small wins. Just keep smacking the stacking the small wins that you can stack that you have control over. A lot of us, when things get hairy or things get dark or things get scary, things get hairy, things get dark, things get scary. We stop doing the things that make us feel good. We stop going to the gym. We start eating unhealthy. We, you know, drink a little bit more. We escape a little bit more, and we don't face the monster and the look him in the eyes you know and um and 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 i kind of do the opposite right like if shit's getting real i know that i've got to triple down on the small wins that i have control over and that is creatures of habit that is our story that is our mission giving people an opportunity to be a part of a community of people that are looking to create these small wins on a daily basis. Is meal one part of it? Fuck yeah. Is nightcap a part of it? Fuck yeah. Are there other things that we're going to launch down the road that are going to be a part of that story? Yes. But it's so much more than that. It's so much more than that. Because if you can win, no matter what, it doesn't really matter what happens externally. Yeah. There's not that much that I can add to that, to be honest. Um, I think it summarizes greatly what the ethos of the brand is all about, but why I love the brand so much is because there's like people behind it that actually live that way. And it's not lip service, right? Like the, the stacking of all, like when those things become non-negotiable in your life, you just feel better. And that that's like kind of all you have to boil it down to, right? Like you just feel better. And by the way, I encourage failure. Right. Like I encourage it. It's not about um, not losing. It's not about not feeling scared and not um, 
trying so hard that you you fall you know running so fast that you trip like it's about that but i do feel like arming yourself with controllable wins is our story and so we're going to be able to tell that story a lot better now i think with having scott on board and if anybody's listening to this and they're an email expert email savage email assassin email sniper and you want to join the, the creatures have a team we are actually looking for someone to come join the the ranks here and uh and help us with email because um you know it's it's definitely it's a, it's a channel that we know we we could we could probably be be better at speaking of which i got to write my thursday email on the train home tonight i got i can't believe i didn't do that on the train down sorry about that well, that's all good um anyway i'm so great i'm so grateful for where we're at i'm so grateful for all we've learned over the last few months of having a battle having to go to war and here we are man high fives all around yeah high fives all around um, yeah, I think there's a lot of positive things ahead, um, and a lot of positive things too, that I think people will be able to engage with, right? Like email is going to be a touch point that engages with the community. Obviously we talked about the organic social, um, we're re-strategizing around our affiliate program and what that's going to look like. And so people within the space that kind of also want to spread the same message, um, and believe in that sort of lifestyle, um, and have people around them that they want to influence and that doesn't necessarily need to be like the Mike Chernows of the world you know there's people in I am by no means a social media influencer and like I have friends and family that get impacted by me wanting to be that way right you know you can one person can impact a handful of people and that'll be um, that'll be something that you know there might be opportunity to do in engaging with the brand um, so yeah, there's just a lot of uh, a lot of good stuff, and hopefully, a lot of the community is more and more involved in all of that. Guys, gals, all of you, thank you, thank you for supporting Creatures of Habit. Thank you for being there with us the whole way through. Really, thank you, fucking thank you. We're the two of us are able to fight another day because of you, and we're also able to do what we love to do, which is build a company that has meaning build a company that that we believe has the ability to make an impact on lives so really i thank you so much you know the drill please share the podcast share it with friends family if you're an entrepreneur i'm sure that you know you like listening to this specific series uh, but you know i think anybody can get some um, value out of this give us a five-star rating and a review and if you don't <laughs> uh, give us a five-star rating of you. It means a lot. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Until the next one, you know the dilly. Peace.